but um, I guess before we get started, Brett, I saw you joined. I didn't know if you wanted to introduce yourself really quickly. Sure. Thanks, Caitlin. Um, hey, everybody. My name is Brett Thorne. I started with DOT just about a month ago as the new chief of transportation services. Um, so I'm kind of overseeing the Dockless Vehicle Program, although Caitlin is doing such a good job that uh, thankfully I don't need to do too much. She's handling it pretty well. I'm also um, kind of overseeing the Charm City Circulator and the Harbor Connector and doing a little bit of work on the Red Line as well. So happy to be here and uh, look forward to working with y'all. Cool. Thank you. Excited to have you join. It's good to have more people working on micromobility, but I'm going to share my screen, hopefully with the presentation. Um, let's see, can someone just let me know if you can see this? And see. Yep. Cool. Thank you all. Well, welcome to the Baltimore micromobility program quarterly meeting. We have these every quarter to just kind of check in on progress um, about the program and give general updates. Um, so this is our start of our second quarter of the year. Um, we have a pretty busy agenda for this meeting and we'll just give those program updates. Um, we always do the data updates with the ridership compliance um, and some other exciting tidbits and then we actually closed out our user survey that we've been doing for the past four years that's available through the spin app and on the program website and DOT social media to get input from riders on the program and what they're looking forward to um, improvement wise for next permit year. Um, the spin team is here and I know they have a lot of exciting updates um, to share with you all about things that have been going on in the first quarter. We'll also talk about um, revisions and the upcoming permit for our 2024-2025 permit, which will start in July of this year. And finally, we'll talk about Bike to Work Week and other exciting engagement opportunities um, coming up in the spring and summer as the weather gets nicer. So for our first quarter updates, there's been a lot of exciting things for the Dockless program. Um, and thank you to SPIN for making lots of these improvements happen. Um, SPIN in March launched new scooters in Baltimore. Um, so starting to turn over some of their existing fleet that's been out there in Baltimore with their new and improved scooters. Um, and I think the SPIN team will talk a little bit more specifically about those scooters, but definitely keep an eye out for those um, around Baltimore as we're starting to see more of them. SPIN also launched um, an improved and further discounted SPIN access plan. We have a little bit more information to share about that, but actually making rides free for eligible riders. Um, and then we've kicked off doing some engagement this spring. We had our first kind of event as the weather got nicer down near Rashfield, um, showing off the new scooters um, and getting to spend some time with people in the communities. And we have a few more of those events planned for the rest of the spring. Um, for our data updates, um, this is the annual comparison of weekly trips in the city of Baltimore. Um, you can see that 2024 is a little bit on the lower side, but it is growing um, as we are going into April. Um, for the average weekly trips, um, the top table is just showing overall the average weekly trips and you can see um, that the whole year in comparison to the first quarter of the year looks very different. We normally see our highest ridership in the quarter that has the summertime and then also into the fall. Um, we see ridership just continuing to grow. So as far as average weekly trips for the first quarter of this year, 
we're looking a little bit lower than the past couple of years, but the first quarter of the year is always pretty difficult um, to okay, compare. But yes. Sorry, your slides aren't changing. Um, oh no. Let's see. Are they changing now? Uh, we're yeah. still on the first slide. No. Oh no. You may have it like in presenter mode or something. Yeah, let me try. Um, can you still see my screen though? No. Nope. Yeah. No. Nope. Oh, it's just a gallery view. <laughs> can you tell this is our first meeting in WebEx? <laughs> Um, okay. Can you see just PowerPoint yeah. right now? Yes. And you can see, see the first mouse. slide. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. They're well, I think we're going to be in this. <laughs> so, anyway. um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, when I was going on and on before about weekly trips, this is the slide that I wanted to be on. So you can see that these are the actual averages of the weekly trips um so 2024 january through march is looking a little bit lower than the past couple of years we had a provider leave the city unexpectedly and we've also had a lot more winter weather in january and february than we had in previous years so we're really hoping when we meet again in july that we'll see a lot of growth in this next quarter with ridership and be a little bit more aligned with previous years of ridership. Same with the trips per vehicle per day, we've kind of seen it fluctuate throughout the past year through 2023 and the beginning of 2024. Um, in the summer and the fall, you can see that we we're starting to reach the target utilization. So having every vehicle ridden at least once per day, keeping the scooters moving um, throughout Baltimore and not staying in one place. Um, and then we had a pretty significant dip in January, but we're back, back growing, back towards having um, the scooters ridden more frequently. Um, as far as the comparison of the utilization, um, the average utilization is actually a little bit higher than it was last year. Last year, we did have more vehicles out there than we did at the start of this year. But looking ahead throughout April so far, in the month of April, we have had over, been averaging over one ride per scooter e-bike every day, which is looking great and looks positive for this coming year. Um, here's another graph showing the number of scooters that are deployed out there, the total trips and the seven day average. This is a little bit of a wild looking graph, but what we're looking for is for that gray line or the vehicles deployed line to be approximately aligning with the seven day average, so the orange line. So you can see like last summer, we had pretty good alignment where we were having um, the scooters ridden at least once per day. So that's what we're looking for as we move into the summer and fall of this year. Those are most of the data updates for this presentation. Um, for the program updates, um, exciting news for the SPIN access, and I know that Matias or Jeremy um, from SPIN will share more about this too, but Baltimore riders um, with limited income or residents of Baltimore, visitors of Baltimore that are enrolled in public benefits programs are now eligible for free daily e-bike and e-scooter um, rides in Baltimore. and. We'll be sharing more information. Um, there's pretty good instructions on how to register for that on the SPIN website that will walk you through what documents you need and what information you need to fill out. Um, but we're also looking to update instructions on the program website um, so that uh, it's more accessible and we have it readily available for those interested. 
Um, for the permit holder compliance this year, um, here's a general update on the different metrics we've been looking at. Um, many of you are familiar that we're sending out compliance check-ins or kind of like report cards every two weeks with how um, operators are performing and aligning with the metrics we laid out for the program. Um, we try to work with operators the best we can um, to make sure that they're meeting this. And part of the way we do that is by giving two warnings before issuing a citation. Um, so a citation has a monetary fine associated with it. So giving two warnings um, and opportunities to work with the city and fix issues. So it's great to see that we haven't had any citations. So thank you, Spin, for um, doing a good job this year. And of course, um, keeping up with compliance um, is really important for the city and we try to reward compliance by offering permit renewals. So if a company doesn't receive any citations during the permit year, they're eligible to continue operating next year. And SPIN is still very much on track to continue operating here in the next year and continue a lot of their exciting programs that they've been working on. So right now in Baltimore, we have SPIN. Um, we previously had another permit holder who left at the end of last year, but we have SPIN and they're allowed up to the 2800 e-scooters, which is currently a mix of their older model of scooter um, and their new scooters, as well as a growing number of e-bikes that are out there. So we're excited to see more bikes. And I think everyone here will also be excited, not only about the new scooters, but also keep a lookout for the new scooters that have seats on them. I'm sure they will be enormously popular <laughs> amongst riders. So lots of new things to keep an eye on. And then I'll hand it over to the SPIN team to walk through their updates. Sure. Uh, hey, everyone. Thanks, Kathleen. Thanks, Fred. Um, so we're excited um, about announcing some of the Updates that we're bringing to the program, if you want to go to the next slide, Caitlin, uh, basically starting by saying that we had 130 or more than 130,000 trips in Q1 of 2024. That's a 16% grow year over year over 2023 um, with 110,000 unique users. Uh, Caitlin, like you said, I think that ridership this first quarter uh, wasn't exactly what we all had been expected. Unfortunately, weather hasn't been on our side. We had a pretty cold and rainy uh, first quarter, we've seen that across the entire mid-Atlantic region, Washington, D.C., Arlington, Alexandria, Montgomery County, Baltimore. So uh, hoping for a better weather and for people to be able to actually use more scooters and bikes as a transportation alternative. Um, we've been working very well, hard with both uh, BCDOT and Bike More, um, holding educational events in transportation in secure communities. We're promoting our discounting writing plans. Also, I wanted to remind and, and just again, I don't know if this was brought up in the next in the, in the previous meeting. Um, we have exited our restructuring process. We are now again a private company. We have secured an additional $25 million in investment for this new phase of the company. We're pretty excited about that. And, and part of that investment is definitely going into Baltimore with uh, new vehicles, uh, better access programs, and a lot of education um, and campaigns too. So uh, definitely planning to keep increasing our, our, our fleet in, in Baltimore. If you wanna go to the next slide. Like we said, we're planning to start uh, swapping our entire fleet in Baltimore. We're starting with the goal of a thousand new vehicles. That's $1 million in investment only in vehicles. We're also bringing additional bikes. I know how popular bikes are and how <laughs> how much the city likes these transportation uh, alternatives. So we have a pretty big commitment on that too. Um, so we also are, like you said, Caitlin, introducing a new spin access program. So basically we have decided and based on the success of the program in Washington DC, when we were able to have more than 20% of our ridership coming from this program, we decided to implement the same program in Baltimore. So we are basically giving 
four free 30 minute trips for every single person that can apply for this program to ride actually for free. We are trying to provide an equitable, sustainable um, transportation alternative for everyone. And the idea is that people who really need it, they can actually use it for free. So we're pretty excited about introducing this program. We've seen already 1,200 uh, rides coming from this program so far in March. So that's a pretty good start rate. Um, and definitely planning to invest more in uh, in-app messaging, communication, social media, and working with DOT just to make sure that we can um, make everyone aware that this program is now out there and everyone can actually use it. Um, and our last slide, it's basically a little bit of a summary of the events we've been doing. We did our event uh, where we launched, and Kaylin, you pretty much touched on this, uh, the new vehicles. Excited to have a, a lot of people participating from this event. We are also partnering with um, the Bedworks. Uh, we did a demo where we showcase our operations. We are training our mechanics. We are working with them in providing opportunities of labor to work with us. So like we said, um, definitely very committed to this program and, and the future of this program. Pretty excited for what's coming next. Um, working hard for uh, bike to work month and bike to work day two. So definitely all good news on, on our end. Um, so thank you for, for letting us present um, on our updates. Yeah, thank you, Matias. And if anyone has questions um, for Matias, feel free to put them in the chat or I'm sure Matias would be happy to connect with you after this. Um, just to elaborate a little bit more on the VetWorks partnership, because um, I don't think we've talked too extensively about that in this meeting. Um, VetWorks is a local organization that provides vocational training for local veterans in the area and SPIN has very kindly been working with them um, recently to get some of their students connected who are interested in learning about the mechanics of the e-scooters and the e-bikes. Um, so it's been really awesome to get to meet their team and see SPIN connect with them over the past month or so. So thank you, Matias and SPIN team. Um, for the discussion for the remaining part of this meeting, a lot of it is going to be focused on what's to come. Um, we're kind of through our updates um, for the first quarter and starting to look ahead for um, the second quarter of the year and then into the start of the permit year. Um, and one of the ways that we get input on the program and connect with people and larger groups of people um, is by having a user survey. Um, many of you may have taken it this year or have taken it several years in a row, um, but we have a user survey specifically for riders that's available for about two months in the spin app, there's a pop-up message, and then we posted it on DOT social media and the website um, and tried to share it in a few different locations um, to just get feedback on the program and what could be going better, what are riders interested in seeing over the next year and in the coming permit years, and then also just keeping track of changes to the program over time like are people becoming more familiar with the rules and regulations for riding scooters in the city of Baltimore um, and things like that. So our survey is now closed. We had a good response rate. We had about 800 respondents to the survey, which is pretty on par with our previous years. 48% um, of those respondents said that they were using dockless vehicles at least once per week. So we had a lot of frequent and dedicated riders that took this survey. And then we also had a really high and surprising response rate of people that said that they are eligible or have used the equity plans. So the spin access plan that we've been talking about this morning, which is really great to see people are familiar with those opportunities um, and are taking advantage of them. So we'll have a full 
results analysis available on our website later this year before the start of the permit year that kind of breaks down all the different findings for the different questions in the survey. But some of the high level questions that were asked in here um, and some of the guiding questions were, should Baltimore um, permit an additional com company to operate here? Um, we had previously had two operators until the beginning of this year and the majority of respondents said yes, they were interested in having an additional option here. Um, and we also had a good number of respondents, 66%, that said an improvement to the program would be having the permit holder, so SPIN or someone, an additional company offering more vehicle and more vehicle options in Baltimore. Um, so those are kind of things that every year we look to to inform the program. Um, we obviously can't talk and engage every rider in the city, but it's really great to have um, a well-received survey that um, provides some insight into how people are feeling about the dockless vehicles. So following our survey where we're collecting feedback, we um, are also making updates to our rules and regulations. This is an annual process um, that many of you are very familiar with. So in our January to April timeframe, we're collecting feedback. So talking to other cities and seeing what they're doing with their program, we're engaging through different community events, but also through the survey. And then we're making updates to the regulations. And I'll share more about that in the coming slides, but to make updates to make the program and the permit um, year next year stronger than this current year. Um, so with the updates to the regulations, every year there's the opportunity for public comment. So that's um, mandatory for the city of Baltimore when you're making these updates to have this 30 day public comment period associated with the regulations. So in early May, you'll all get an email notification that the permit regulations for this coming year are available for public comment. And you, there will be instructions for how to share your comments if you have any, or feel free to contact me or Brett if you have any comments you wanna share or if you wanna talk about any of the regulations and that will be open for 30 days um, and it should tentatively be open starting May 8th so in about two weeks here. Um, in June we'll finalize the rules and regulations and then in mid at the beginning of June to mid-June we'll um, review the permit renewals um, and potential applications and then we'll start the permit all over again. Um, so continuing on this annual cycle. So there's quite a few key dates to keep tabs on. <laughs> if you're familiar with the program or interested in engaging more with the program. So um, during this meet, meet, which is today, April 24th, we're going to review the revisions with you all um, early in May, the revisions and just overall regulations for the program will be open for public comment if you have anything you want to share. Um, looking forward even further, May 15th, um, we'll award the permit renewal um, contingent on SPIN continuing good performance um, to have them operate in the city of Baltimore next year. We're also um, looking to hold a permit application to um, allow potentially a second operator to join the city of Baltimore. And that will also be open in May. And I have more information about that to share in a little bit. Um, and we're looking to finalize all of this in early June so we can spend the month of June um, getting ready for the new permit year that starts in July. So a very busy spring and early summer for this program. As far as actually determining revisions and making updates to the permit. 
we always try to review national best practices and keep in touch with a lot of peer cities. So a lot of conversations with other cities in the Northeast and along the East Coast with what they're doing with micromobility in their cities. We hold these meetings every quarter. Um, and then we also collect user feedback through the annual survey. And finally, holding that open public comment period for even more feedback and maybe even more specific feedback on the program. So for this coming year, we have only a few revisions and then we have some revisions that we're going to keep in our back pocket for future permit years or just share things that we're thinking about in the long term for this program, but won't be implementing this year. Um, so the first um, proposed revision that will be um, in the permit regulations for this coming year is making sure that there's a section that addresses a departure process for permit holders leaving Baltimore before the end of the permit year. Um, this is a response to a permit holder leaving unexpectedly previously. Um, and just making sure we have a really outlined process for collecting vehicles. Um, there are a lot of regulations already about permit holders being responsible for their vehicles and collecting them, but this is just something that was recommended by leadership and the legal team to further flush out details um, for getting vehicles collected in a timely manner. Um, we're also um, looking to increase the maximum number of vehicles a permit holder can initially offer from 1,000 vehicles to 1,500 vehicles. So a little, a uh, big, a somewhat boost in the number of vehicles that a company can initially rev up the operating here. Um, and we're just trying to encourage um, bringing more vehicle types and just more vehicles in general to grow ridership um, and keep the market competitive as other interested parties are entering the Baltimore market. Um, and finally, for this year, the last revision is requiring mechanical check and relocation of the vehicles every five days. Um, we've kind of had some discussion back and forth um, about this, um, and we're hoping to continue to encourage um, the vehicles being ridden very frequently, but also um, not keeping them in the same location and having eyes on all of the vehicles within five days. Um, and we'll talk more about logistics and process for making this happen, but we're just really trying to encourage um, it. Even though we try to really encourage on the rider side, good parking, we know that sometimes vehicles get left in less than ideal conditions are tipped over, but making sure that there's eyes and we're moving the vehicles very frequently. So those are the main revisions for this year. They'll be available at the beginning of May on the website if anyone has anything additional they'd like to add, or if you have clarifying questions about any of these, feel free to reach out to me or Brett to discuss further. And then we look forward to hearing from you um, in the public comment period or um, reaching out to us directly. So. We had a couple during our first quarter, we had a good number of revisions proposed for future permit years that we were started to think about, um, but are not implementing this year, but we'll kind of revisit them. It, even if we don't make changes this year, we'll still keep a running list of like what our revisions we're interested in um, and might look to implement in the coming years. So one of them, which I think will be really exciting for everyone involved, is increasing the permit length from one to two years or even longer um, in the city of Baltimore. So we've already started to kind of implement this with the permit renewal option for good compliance. Um, but we also 
would like to just offer a longer permit period as companies um, continue to want to operate here um, and not have this, um, I guess, application process and permitting process go every year, but um, strengthen the program and have longer term operators here. Um, we also looked at increasing the security bond amount. Um, currently, operators are required to um, have a $10,000 security bond um, that can be used to tow and retrieve vehicles as needed. So coming over the next year, we'll kind of look towards adjusting that amount maybe as needed, but we are not making any changes to that this year. And we'll just continue to stay in tune to best practices for parking. So revisiting lock two and other parking requirements that other cities um, are implementing and seeing how they would work in Baltimore in the future. So that was a, a lot of information and a lot of text on all these slides, but we we're hoping to um, hear from you all about these revisions or other things you've been thinking about. So we have a Mentimeter, which I will, <laughs> I don't know, Cesar, are you able to, present it so that people can start sharing? Or if someone uses this QR code, can you let me know um, if the poll is open already? It says waiting for presenter. Okay, let me, maybe I will, I will be the presenter. Okay. It looks like, let's see. Is it open now? Uh, no, okay. it still says waiting for the center on my end. Okay, let's see. Share, present. Okay, I think that it should be open now. Yeah, it looks like it is open now. Yeah. Okay, cool. Wow. WebEx is different than Teams, but. <laughs> So we have kind of mixed answers. Um, I don't know if anyone feels comfortable sharing or if they want to connect with me after. If you're no or not sure or want more information, I'm happy to share with you all um, more details about this and then happy to talk through any questions you have or if anyone feels comfortable um, sharing right now as we're talking about them or wants to add anything else, feel free to come off mute. Okay, well, no, no chatter coming from anyone else, but we can go to the next question also. Hopefully this poll will work, but um, if you have other revisions that you're interested, whether it be for this year or next year or in the future that you're interested in sharing with us, we're happy, like you can share them with me directly or feel free to add a comment to this poll with um, the number, just what you're looking for in the future. And we'll try to look into these revisions for future permits or just kind of explore more. I see one response so far, which is unlimited scoots. I wonder, I don't know. 
an unlimited number of scooters out there. And we'll just leave this open for a few minutes and then we can, yeah, for sure. The lock two requirements has been something that Baltimore has looked at previously and specifically looked at um, in the past two permit years, um, but we would have to, as this comment noted, install a lot more bike racks in order to make that feasible. 311 incorporation is something else that has been looked at and is being looked at. Docked bikes, um, I think, is something else that the city might be interested in the future. Um, but yeah, we'll leave this open, so feel free to um, keep sharing your ideas or email me directly and we'll take note of all of these um, and keep in touch about these in future presentations. So back back to back to the slides. Um, so okay, just double checking everyone can see the slides again. Yeah, we can see. Okay, thank you. Um, so looking ahead to the 2024-2025 permit, just a reminder that the city is able to issue up to three dockless vehicle permits annually. So that could be three different companies that operate here, which could be a mix of e-scooters, e-bikes, or something else like an adaptive vehicle program. Um, so we had quite the mix of companies operate here. Um, we previously had three operators and narrowed down to two last year. Um, and we're looking to potentially add a second operator again in this coming permit year. Um, so in order to determine the permits for next year, a lot of you are familiar, or if you're joining for the first time, Baltimore has two mechanisms for determining permits for the upcoming year. So the first one is the renewal process. So that's for um, granting a permit renewal to a company that already operates here. Um, and we're anticipating awarding the permit renewal to SPIN. And the next step will be sending that permit renewal and the agreement to SPIN um hopefully on may 15th of this year um given they continue their great performance in the city of baltimore um and the second mechanism um which some of you who have been here for a little bit longer are more familiar with is the competitive application process um, which we're anticipating holding an application process for an additional permit holder starting in May, and the application will be open for most of May, and then will be reviewed by a committee of different DOT and city representatives to score the permit, and we'll review the permits and determine um, a potential um, second permit holder for this year, um, given whatever applications we receive um, and thinking about what mix of vehicles and the number of vehicles we want to have out there. So definitely keep an eye open um, in the email that I'll send to this email list will include the open regulations for public comment and also a link to the application. So the application might not be um, applicable to everyone, but feel free to share um, as needed. So lots of things coming ahead in May and June for this program. Um, so those are most of the things um, as far as next steps for the permit year. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask them now. I also saw that there were some things in the chat which I cannot see. Um, 
but can check after I get through the slides and then answer any questions. Um, so the last thing I wanted to touch on for this is Bike to Work Week is coming up. It's in three weeks from now, um, so in mid-May, and Bike to Work Week is usually a lot of fun, um, and there's a lot of different events throughout the city, so Bike to Work Week is essentially like a celebration and advocacy for bike commuting um, in the city of Baltimore, and it's also in partnership with all of Central Maryland with um, BMC. So you can register for an, um, Bike to Work Day now and you'll get a t-shirt that you can pick up at a lot of different locations throughout the city on actual Bike to Work Day, which is that Friday, May 17th. There's several events going on throughout the city, including um, pit stops at different bike shops, the library, and some other locations throughout the city where you can pick up your t-shirts, get some goodies, and spend time with other people that are commuting by bike that day. Baltimore City Department of Transportation will be holding a pretty big pit stop at the War Memorial Plaza on Bike to Work Day, um, where you can come visit and see us. Um, mm -hmm. We'll also, um, during that week, SPIN is holding an event at Lake Montebello to show off their new scooters um, and get people to try out the e-bikes too. Um, so you can come see us then too. And that's on the Tuesday of Bike to Work Week. And then finally, before we get to questions and looking through the chat, um, just some next steps and action items for everyone. If you're interested, register for Bike to Work Week. Look out for the announcement and email from all of us when the rules and regulations are open for public comment. If you have any comments, feel free to submit them to Baltimore City. We're always looking to improve the program and hear from everyone. Um, and then we'll also have announcements regarding permit renewals and permit applications for the next year. If you have any community events, I know there's lots of things coming up in the summer. Um, you can reach out to me or Matthias if you're interested in SPIN, um, maybe participating in some way in your event or DOT participating in the event in some way, just let us know. Um, and then we should be back to the more regularly scheduled quarterly meetings on July 10th, which will kick off our new permit year. So we have um, like 10 or 15 minutes left in this meeting. Um, where I'm happy to answer questions if anyone has any. Um, but um, yeah, thank you for sticking around and listening in despite the numerous technical <laughs> issues that happen. We really appreciate you being here. Um, let me scroll through the chat real quick in case I missed any questions. Okay. Brett shared his email in the chat too, so you can reach out to me, Caitlin Schaefer, with the same email address. Um, and then I saw Graham, I think, can we have a third option of yes, if nothing else, but perhaps modified? Was that? That was in response to the first question. Yeah, then in the next oh. question basically was that third option. Okay. Um well if no one has any other questions, we can wrap up a little bit early. Uh oh, Jed, I see you have your hand raised. You can yeah, come off I mute. Just like a super quick like data request. Um, would it be possible to get the complete streets um, equity map put in populous as like one of the layers so that we could people can look at like the scooter distribution and the routes based on those equity priority areas? Yeah, we can do that. I'll make a note of that. Thanks. Cool. Okay.
Um, I'm not seeing any other hand raised, so be on the lookout in early May for emails from the program. Um, let us know if you have anything else in the meantime. Um, thank you all for joining. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Are you done?